safe to say it is a postmodernist film. Or... Yeah, you know, it is a it is a postmodernist film in the sense that it's built upon the debris of the past. Uh, it's what you know. It's what Walter Benjamin might call kitsch, in a way, in, in the highest sense. Uh, I hope it is um, a collage of noir and science fiction and fantasy and pop culture detritus. Um, it's what uh, Alan Sharp, who wrote Night Moves, would be the first to tell you that he thought of Night Moves as pastiche. You know, he was a Scotsman, much like Alex Proyas is an Australian. Uh, and it's a response, I think, it started for Alex being an Australian as a response to the dominant culture, which is American pop culture in our time. And um, so when Alan Sharp wrote Night Moves, or he, you know, it was a pastiche of the private eye genre, when he wrote Alzana's Raid, he claims it's a pastiche of Westerns, even though I think it's a highly, you know, an incredibly superior, uh, genuine Western. He would say it's a pastiche. Uh, so, again, using the terms kitsch and pastiche, I would hope in their highest sense, in their best sense, Dark City is a pastiche of all these other elements. Um, and perhaps even more so now when I believe and many people believe that cinema as an art form is been degraded to such a point that it, that that the glories of cinema past uh, might as well be the the glories of 19th century Parisian culture that Walter Benjamin was, you know, dealing with the loss of, uh, and in fact, what what postmodernists are all about is about the loss of uh, the tradition that once sustained people, cultural tra traditions and social traditions, because. Uh, technology has accelerated social change and the pace of modern life is beyond that of the ordinary individual to cope with. Um, and, uh, you know, it's the dialectical uh, confrontation of the recent past with the here and now that's something new in human experience that, uh, you know, the old liberal notions of uh, the individual being at the center of the world uh, have been supplanted by some more modern notions of society and what's good for society and collective thinking uh, and the rise of the modern metropolis uh, where people now are alienated in a way that for centuries they weren't. Um, that it was with industrialization and, and machine the machine age everything that Dark City is really about uh, that led to the crisis just uh, as it's led to the crisis in the narrative of Dark City, that some sort of social explosion is necessary and, and is going to occur out of that. Um, it's a postmodernist film because, um, again, as Walter Benjamin, or Walter Benjamin, if you prefer, would have said, uh, Cinema itself is is postmodern in the sense that in in uh, you know in 19th century Paris or before the rise of the of the technological industrial age, cities were prison worlds. The average person living in a city couldn't travel. Maybe if they were affluent enough, they would go to the seaside. They'd go to their equivalent of Shell Beach once a year. But um, it was only with the arrival of cinema that people could travel and start to dream and the consumer society really started to kick in um, and that before then the way someone traveled would be uh, as a as a walker uh, through the streets of the city and Walter Benjamin believed walking through the streets of Paris and seeing uh, the past in the in the buildings that it still existed from the past he felt that really, the streets were like passageways between scenic um, backdrops. That uh, that sense that that uh, many modern postmodernist thinkers have had is that uh, the city is a stage, and that uh, what do you do with scenic backdrops and wings, buildings as wings? You move them and shift them and change them. Uh, so uh, so that postmodernist sense of the the cityscape being both a stage and uh, and a prison world, I think is what, whether it's, I don't know if it was at all conscious on Alex's part or if he's, you know, read 
the same pretentious stuff that I am. <laughs> but uh, that's clearly what a film like this is dealing in. In my classes, um, I use the film because it's extraordinarily interesting in itself and also because it, in fact, visualizes and makes concrete uh, a number of different concepts um, that have to do with space, considering space-time, how we live in and inhabit space and time as part of the way we become conscious people and have identities. I am a doctor. So the question is, what if you've never heard of Schreber? And what if you think that Bumstead refers to Dagwood? Does that affect your viewing experience? And I don't think so. I think the more you know, the more interesting it can be to you. But the less you know is not necessarily fatal. I think you can, you can enjoy a good movie just on the basis of whatever it is you're getting out of it. And uh, it's not necessary to have these references. It's just that as you see them, they may give you associations and they may give you ideas of what the director was thinking of or maybe not. Frequently, I think you can bring an idea to a movie that the director didn't have there and didn't put there. But that's okay because I, I've been told by more than one director that once they finish the film, it's not theirs. That once they finish it, it exists between the screen and the mind of the viewer. It exists here. And whatever goes on in here is what the movie is, not what was going on in the head of the director. So that uh, it's as if it's a true meeting of the minds. Everything on the screen is the director's mind. Everything is here is your mind. And the two come together to create this movie that neither one of you may actually see in quite the same way. <laughs>